today we are going to do four bridal drapes. We're gonna start off with the Gujarati drape and then we're gonna to transition to the Nivi drape and then a Can Can drape and finally finish with the Bengali drape. I chose this order because the palu, as you'll see, will get progressively longer and so it'll be easy for us to transition. But whatever drape you decide to wear, you won't have that problem, so let's get started. You'll want to iron the entire sari for all four drapes, so let's just get this out of the way. Once you've ironed the sari, you want to pleat the palu. For the Gujarati drape, we're going to pleat it pretty short. Like I'm not gonna do a huge length. It's gonna be pretty much like around my hips. And so I'm just gonna pleat the palu that length. And you want to just take the first pleat and lay it over the next layer and repeat that until you get to the other end. When you've pleated the palu, you want to lay it over your right shoulder and make sure that it's the length that you want. So I'm happy with this length. I'm just going to pleat the palu into place, fan out the pleats and make sure that they stay in place when I go to drape them. The Gujarati drape starts off pretty much the same as the Nivea drape. Once you've tucked it around, you want to just take the other end of the palu and lay it your right shoulder. You want to follow this edge closest to your body and start pleating. You guys can check out my pleating tutorial for the easiest, quickest way to pleat your sari. So you want to leave a little bit of sari or fabric here so it creates this fold. Shake out your pleats. And the biggest difference between the Nivi drape and the Gujarati drape is that the pleats face the right way. This is the Nivi drape and this is the Gujarati drape. You can stagger the pleats like you do for the Nivi drape. Tuck them in. So once you've tucked in these pleats, you wanna bring your palu and you can take it back here and kind of pin it back here or you can just leave it in front like this. That's totally cool too. Just make sure it kind of like lines up with these. And I've added a belt and this is the Gujarati drape. Next, we're gonna do the Nivi drape. For the Nivi drape, you want to take a longer palu. So I'm just repleating the palu. And it's the same idea applies. You just create a pleat and lay it over the next fold. It's a little harder to do now that I just pleated for the Gujarati drape. Like that's why it's really important that you iron your sari because if there's folds in the sari, it just makes it harder for you to get those pleats perfectly. Once I'm happy with the pleats, I'm just going to press them all down so that they create these crisp pleats for me to work with while I'm draping. I'm just going to iron down the chest pleats because I like them to look pressed and neat, but this is totally an optional step, especially if the sari you're using um, is not puffy and it will you know, conform to your body. Remember to always tuck in, especially these long with bridal saris, you wanna make sure that you're taking that extra step to really tuck it in flat against your body so you don't have any bulges from the extra fabric. I'm gonna just bring my palu around. And I'm gonna put it on my left shoulder. What I'm gonna do here is, so I have this loop of fabric. This is what I'm gonna pleat. So let's pleat that first. Again, your right hand or whatever hand you're pleating with to the left of your belly button and then start pleating. I'm gonna link the video here where you can learn how to pleat. You wanna make sure you have like that much of fabric and you don't pleat this part. I'm gonna shake out my pleats, let them go and then stagger them and pin them together. 
Okay, and when you go to tuck in the front pleats, you wanna make sure you tuck it in without this fabric that you have left. And I'll show you why in a moment. Okay, so you're gonna reach underneath all of your pleats, pull this, and guide the fabric and take as many hip pleats as you'd like. And then do a little twist and tuck it into your right hip. You're gonna take any extra material here, you're just gonna fold it forward and tuck it in. This is so that this pleat does not open up and then you're gonna bring your palu and you're pretty much done. If this is for your wedding and you're the bride, what I would do is I would actually take a straightener and uh, iron these down like this so it's really just conforms to your body. Because as you see here, it's kind of like I've ironed this much but I didn't iron this part. So you wanna make sure that, like I mean with this sari, I could just kind of fold it into place but it would look even better if you were to um, do it with a hair straightener. The reason I wouldn't do this part on a ironing board is there's no way you're gonna know where that is on your body until you go to drape it. So the best way to do that is to just do these finishing touches with a hair straightener. And that's pretty much it. And of course, for the Nivy drape, I always recommend wearing a waist chain. And this is the Nivy drape. Next, we're going to do the Can Can drape. For the Can Can drape, you can keep the same pleats that you used for the Nivy drape, so the palu does not change, and I'm gonna put that over my left shoulder. The rest of the sari, I'm going to pleat and tuck in to the back. So once you've pleated it, you're just gonna tuck it in to the back. Once you've tucked it in, you're just gonna take the leftover fabric and pleat down the side. And then this part is just gonna be tucked into the front. And that's it, you can fix up the pleats to make sure you're happy with how they look and add a belt if you'd like a more structured look. And this is the Kangan drape. Now on to the Bengali drape. For the Bengali drape, we're gonna start off the same way as the Navi drape. Once you get to the front though, you're gonna just take the palu and put it on your left shoulder. And then this part, you're going to take very wide pleats and I'm gonna show you how. You're gonna tuck in as you go. Once you get to the end and closer to your pelu, you're just gonna take that extra bit and tuck it into the back of your drape. And then finally, you're just gonna take the pelu, take the end of it, create some very rough pleats here on the corner and then pin it to your blouse. I hope you enjoyed a look at four of the most popular bridal drapes today. I'd love to know which one was your favorite. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you in a future video.